episode six, where we're going to talk about individual well-being and couple well-being and education. Uh, this is kind of an interesting lesson because some family life education starts with individuals. And there are some programs out there that are help individuals learn how to function well and how to do well in their lives and how to partner and how to move forward in family life. But sometimes we need to just focus on helping individuals feel successful in what they're doing. One of the ways that we thought that families or that individuals needed to improve or where we could measure their improvement was this idea of uh, self-esteem. We thought if we could just boost the self-esteem of an individual that they would be better off. What we found was self-esteem really is a, an effective predictor, kind of, but that it had a curvilinear effect. In other words, the higher your self-esteem, the more narcissistic you became. And so it really wasn't important just to boost someone's self-esteem. We had to help them learn how to do things. And so we've kind of moved away from that self-esteem variable, and we've moved on to understanding well-being in terms of self-worth, self-efficacy, uh, the ability to engage in things that are that are going on. And we focused a lot on identity development. And that's really important to be able to create that identity development in individuals. One way that we do this is we talk about recreation. What do people do with their own time? It's funny because we have time dedicated to sleep, time dedicated to work, time dedicated sometimes to other responsibilities, but we don't always have time dedicated to leisure. And what's interesting is when you have a choice to do something with your time, what do you do with it? It's something that's really important. In fact, when we talk about recreation, we actually talk about recreation. And we are recreating ourselves in what we are doing. Our hobbies, our interests, the things that we choose to do help define who we are. So when we look at individual well being and identity development, it's key to learn how to engage in things that bring out passions and interests and hobbies and and to create that necessary um, excitement and passion for life. Along those lines, we help individuals create social support networks because as an individual, maybe you're all alone and maybe it feels like you're isolated from other people. Maybe you have family, maybe you don't. It's important for individuals to begin to weave a support network. People that they can turn to for emotional, physical, and other forms of health and, and help. That they can reach out to those people and have people there when they're in times of need or struggle. And so it's going to be very important to help individuals find these things and to create them. And so we'll teach them healthy patterns. We'll teach them healthy skills but we also have to teach them healthy things that help them to identify just who they are. In this work, it's important to be able to measure change. And so sometimes we'll look at a person's identity development or their self-worth or their self-efficacy as a baseline. Where did they start off and where did they finish? We wanna help people to have something that they can measure to see what is the difference from where I'm at to where I'm going? And that can be something that's very important to, to engage in. And so we want to highlight some of those things. The other key piece to this lesson is to focus on um, couple well-being or focus on marital education. Well, that's something that's a very interesting topic because most people think, well, why do I need education on relationships? Well, the divorce rate is high. There are a lot of people who are failing in their dating relationships, and we aren't helping people to be able to get through those. And so there are programs out there that focus specifically on helping people to get into marital relationships. We have programs focused on premarital education. Now that you've found someone, let's teach you the skills that you're going to need in marriage. We have some out programs that are out there for marital enrichment. This is halfway into your marriage or a few years in. 
What do I need to do to make it better? We used to do a really fun activity with marital enrichment. We would pass out little post-it notes to everyone and everyone got two post-it notes. And we would say on the first post-it note, I want you to write down something you wanna change in your partner. And I'd have people raise their hand and say, hey, I need more post-it notes because I there's a lot of things that they need to change. And they could write down and someone would write on each side. And I say, okay, just, just one, just one. And then uh, what do we do with the second one? Well, write down something you can change in you that will benefit your relationship. And this is where people were like, wow, hmm, I can't come up with anything. I'm not sure if I could change me in a, to make me any better. I'm already great in relationships. I had some people say, hey, uh, their partner would say, hey, I'll, I'll give you a few that you could change. Nope, nope. They've got to come up with it on themselves. And so I'd say, take the two things, take the one that's for you, things that you can improve in you and set that in front of you and, and stick it to the table. Take the other one and fold it in half and fold it in half again, and then crumple it up and throw it in this garbage can. And I go around and, and have them throw it away. And it was really hard for them to give up what they wanted their partner to improve. And then we would get up in front of them and say, hey, in this program that we're doing today, the only person that you can change is you. And that's why you're sticking with your to-do list and whatever you said about your partner, that's not something you get to control. This is something you get to control. So let's focus on that. And it was a very effective uh, tool in, in working with couples. Um, the final type of intervention that we might have in family life education is maybe teaching conflict management. And it's important to be understanding of what might happen, um, what, what couples might come, where they might be in the, in the progress and, and where they might be um, along the, the continuum in their life. A lot of times in family life education, people are coming because they, they're on the precipice of divorce. And they're saying, we're here to figure out if we want to stay together or not. And I look at them and say, well, this really isn't an educational program trying to help you to figure that out. We're trying to promote your relationship. And, and it sounds like what you might need to do is some therapy. And so we would refer them to the right place. And so it's important to think about what is the right place for you to be and 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 where is that? And what does that look like? Um, and as we think about couples, we also have to think about who might show up. I'll give you an example. A colleague of mine and I, we wrote a curriculum that focused on those couples who were first getting married. And uh, before they got married, we wanted to teach uh, sexual education. We called it no, no, no to go, go, go. Kind of this group in Utah of individuals who hold off waiting to have sex before marriage and then kind of engaging in sex after marriage. And some of the struggles that if they don't have the right education, that they might have some troubles as people go through. And so we got on KSL, we, we did a presentation, we talked about things, we rented the Provo Library out, we had 100 uh, chairs in the room, and we got 100 people to sign up. In fact, we had 150 people sign up, and we could only take 100. And so we got those 50 couples in there, and we started in, and we got up, and we presented, and we introduced ourselves, and we said, tell us a little bit about who you are. And this was intended for engaged couples who were just getting, uh, just planning on marriage and, and looking and seeing what's going on. And the first couple said, oh, we've been married three months and, and we're having some struggles. And I was like, okay. And the next couple, we've been married for two weeks and have had some struggles. Uh-huh. We've been married for one week and we just got home from our honeymoon and we're having struggles and we're having struggles. And, and it went on and on and on. And pretty soon I looked at, I looked at uh, my partner and I said, boy, uh, we got to get changed on the fly here. This is not a premarital program on what you need to know. This is an intervention for people who have issues. And so we dove right into the, to human sexuality and helping them understand. And people came up and they were like, oh my gosh, this is 
life altering because uh, we didn't think we didn't know what was going on. We didn't know, you know, what mistakes we were making or or what was supposed to happen. Um, it's grateful we have hope. We we can probably go about our relationship, you know, like this this is really helpful for us. And it was a really interesting night because people don't want help until they need it. And couples often won't come for help until they really need it. And that's one of the problems. We can help a good couple become really good if they'll come to an educational program. We can also take a couple that's struggling and make them more stable and help them to be good overall. Sometimes we can't do something for them um, and they need to go to therapy and they some need to even go to discernment counseling, which is determining whether or not to stay together altogether. Someone asked me once if I'd put together a presentation for uh, married couples on the secret to a happy relationship. And I told them that there are three things that couples need to do in order to be healthy and happy. And um, they said, just three? And I said, yeah, just three. Uh, the research shows us that if couples can handle their negativity, that's number one. You have to keep your negativity from exploding. And we have to be able to keep it in check, both for men and women, but especially for men. If men can handle negativity, um, they are going to do much better in relationships. And it, handling negativity protects the stability in relationships and so they said okay so if we handle the negativity we're going to be good right and the answer is no we also have to do number two which is add positivity into the relationship we need romance we need date night we need connection we need to be friends we need to be able to talk to one another we need to be able to spend time together to cuddle to do all those positive things that help us to be connected to one another. Can't just avoid conflict. We need to be connected with one another. We need to have things that are inside jokes and other things that are just us, things that we that we get to know. So if we're able to handle those things, handle our conflict, put in the positive, we're going to be just fine, right? No, we're going to screw up. We are inevitably going to screw up and we are going to find ourselves in moments where um, things are out of whack and we have to find something to help us. And one of those things is what we call transformative um, processes. And a transformative process is something that helps take a relationship and elevate it to a new level to make it a new thing. Things like forgiveness. Forgiveness is so huge in relationships. We have to be able to let go of some of those things that our partner have done that, that have hurt us. It doesn't excuse what they did, but it allows us to let go of it and not to hold on to it. Maybe it's something related to accommodating my partner's uh, personality. Maybe they have some things that, that they do that are really difficult or really hard, but I can, I can work around that and figure out how to accommodate those things. It may be learning how to put our relationship at a higher level, to sanctify our relationship and to consider it something that is sacred. That is something that tends to have this impact in relationships that helps them to transform. Those processes are necessary. When we screw up, how do we get back? How do we overcome some of those things that happen? And so they said, if I do all three of those, will I have a good relationship? And the answer is, you're likely to have a good relationship. If you can engage in all of those processes, handling the negativity, increasing and, and keeping the positive going, and then creating these transformative processes to to fix things when we've screwed up or when we've made a mistake, when we sacrifice for our partner and find enjoyment in doing that. Those things elevate our relationship to a new level and, and we're gonna have successful relationships. So individual well-being, 
couple well-being, those are topics that aren't going away. In fact, there's even a greater need as people get more and more into their phones, they lose social connection, they lose relationships. And we're going to need more and more help to help people to figure out how to connect and how to do things in the right way. So this is a very important topic to engage in. And I wish you a lot of luck as you learn about individual uh, well-being and focusing on couple education. Two very important audiences in family life education.